This is going to be a fun exercise because not only are we going to talk about how to implement an algorithm, but we're also going to talk a little bit about performance. So we have the exercise of recreating the max method. And if you've never used the max method, then let's actually see what this looks like. So I'm going to come here and just create a basic array. So I'm just going to create an array and We'll use the syntax that we've used previously. I'll create an array of a thousand random elements. And now if I want to find the greatest value in there, then I can call array max. And what this is going to allow me to do is simply run this and it's going to print out the greatest value there. So here it prints out an array of a thousand elements. One of those elements was 99 or 999. And so that was the greatest one. That is a very nice and easy way of being able to find the max set of values. But what I want to do is actually create something that kind of recreates that manually. So you will never really technically use this in the sense that you won't ever recreate the max method. However, you will utilize a number of the principles we're going to talk today, talk about in regards to creating your own algorithms or anything like that. So let's talk about two implementations because if you Google this, you will find multiple implementations and surprisingly the implementation that seems to be one of the more popular ones is actually a horrible implementation from a performance point of view. So let's take a look at two implementations. I'm going to actually give us a little bit of room here because we'll eventually recreate the method and put it inside here but before that let's actually just do it separately. So the first way of doing this, which is really a poor implementation, is by creating an array or calling the array, calling sort on the array, and then getting the last element. And we can even call a different array here. So we could do something like this, where I'll create an array just to make things nice and easy. and that so we'll create a very basic array and now if I call this and if I run this you can see that it sorted the items and right here and then it returned the very last element so if you sort the items then you're going to get 10 if you grab the last element here that is perfectly fine however I want to show you how you can test for performance because this may seem like a perfectly fine implementation until you start to get into large numbers. So I'm going to do something called, I'm going to implement benchmark. So I'm going to require benchmark. And what benchmark is, if you've never used it before, is a way of being able to test your code. So test the performance of your code and see how long it takes to run. So I'm going to now create an array and let's just say this is, let's go back to our thousand item array. I'm going to create, call rand on this and we'll say rand of a one to a thousand and we're just going to create a thousand items. Now we're going to call array sort last. This is going to be one option and then the other is going to be a different one that we're going to come up with and this is going to be the one I personally think is better and this is going to be where we call array and then from there we're just going to iterate over so I'm going to say array each do pass in I as a block variable and then say if I is greater than we can create another variable here called new max. And if we set value of new max equal to zero, then we'll say if that is greater than the new max, then we're going to set new max equal to whatever the value of i is. So essentially, if you were to think about the way this algorithm works, 
it's pretty straightforward. You just do something like this, where you, if you have a set of elements like one, five, two, and seven here, each time that this iterates, new it's going to compare the value of new max to whatever the value is in the array so new max as you can see starts out at zero so the very first comparison is going to be with one so it's going to be it's going to check is zero greater than one it is so or it isn't one is greater so it's going to now change new max to one from there, the next time it goes, it's going to say is one greater than five. One is not greater than five, so it's gonna change the value of new max to five. Next, it's gonna say is five greater than two. It is, so new max is just, the whole entire system's just gonna skip, so it's not even going to have to do the swap. Next, it's going to say is five greater than seven. It's not so it's going to change the value to seven so if you can see by taking this approach we've iterated through and we have taken each one of these values and we were able to find out which one was the largest one when you when it comes to algorithm analysis this is actually pretty efficient because we only had to look at each item and we only had to cycle through the array one time now if we were to compare this and actually let me keep that if we were to compare this with the initial implementation of array sort last what's happening here is we don't even get to the point of picking out the highest item right away instead what's happening is a sorting algorithm is running through this and sorting algorithms are very slow even the fastest ones are technically slow because they have to do all kinds of things they have to do things like sort each one of these items and sort the entire array now if you have four items this doesn't take long at all but let's talk about what happens if you have a million items or a hundred million items the fact that you are telling the system that you want to sort the entire thing just to find the greatest value that is a horrible waste of computing power because you're doing a lot of work for something that you only needed to go through the entire system once for you're actually going to make it go through the entire system hundreds thousands possibly hundreds of thousands of times just to find the greatest value so i think that that's actually a very poor implementation and instead what we're going to do now is do something that is going to compare these because i don't want you to just take my word for it i actually want you to think about this as a computer scientist so right here what we want to do i'm going to return the new max value and i'm also going to just for the sake of this i'm going to comment all of this out here and so we don't have any of this code running and i i know i have a variable and a method both called new max and we're, we'll eventually change this but for right now i just want to show you exactly how you can use benchmarks to test your code so let's come down here and in order to use benchmark you just call benchmark just like this dot bm and then pass in some type of argument like 10 just so it can run through it a number of times and then from there we are going to give it a block variable now benchmark is awesome because it makes it really easy to test the code and to be able to test the performance of code so we're going to use two options we're going to test what our each option looks like that's the second implementation the one that i think is going to perform better and here we're just going to call new max so it's going to say you know how long exactly is this going to take and in fact just to prove that this is actually working let's actually put it inside of our inside of our method so i'm going to do a little bit more work right here just so that we can 
do it right. So I'm going to say new max, and it will take an array. So new max will take some type of array of elements. And then we can end it off. And then I'm going to grab all of this code, put it right here. And let's change the these variable names. So uh, just so because you wouldn't ever want to have a variable name that's the same name as your method, or else it's going to think that you're calling the method. So I'm going to say max value, max value. and max value. Okay, and the reason why I did that was just so you can completely trust that what I'm actually doing here is, uh, for performance points of view, is going to test the right thing. So here, our each item is going to call our new max method, and it's going to pass in the array, the array from line four right here. So. We're going to say new max and let's pass in the array. And then let's also now report on and see the performance for the sorted option, which is the first, I think, the very naive option. So with that one, we're just going to say array sort last. And now we can actually get rid of this. And you can see we're not actually calling this method until our benchmark test right here. And then here we're actually calling the method inside or the sort process inside of benchmark. And so what benchmark's going to do is it's going to run through both of these items and then it's going to time it and it's going to give us a report on how long each one took. So let's save this. And instead of running this right inside of the file like I usually like to, uh, that's going to give us a lot of output that we don't really need. So instead, let's actually just run it here. So I'm going to say Ruby. This is December 24th. It's Merry Christmas Eve to everybody. Hit return. And it looks like we have a little syntax error, undefined, local, very, oh, yeah, I guess it would probably help. Need to take our array of elements here. So we have array of elements. Okay, I think that's the only spot. So that should fix it. Now let's run the code. There you go. Okay, so right here, that ran pretty fast, right? You can see, though, if you take a look at this we have each took a pretty short period of time you can see that this is seconds, so this would be one second it took zero 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 five zero so i'm not even sure how small the second that is it worked very fast now sorted you can see definitely took a little bit longer in fact it took a little bit longer than twice as fast but your first initial uh, response maybe who cares both of these went through so fast it really doesn't matter and in a sense you might be right if you only have a thousand items so that's you know definitely perfectly fine if you know your items are always going to be small but watch this watch what happens here if instead of 1000 or even a hundred thousand Watch what happens if I give this 100 million items. Well, now let's compare this. So I'm going to run the same code again. And we could go and we could get a snack or something because this is going to actually take a little while. But now you're going to see if I remember right, this should take over 10 seconds or so. And you're going to see an astronomical difference between both options. So we have each that took four seconds, which definitely took a while. But now let's look at sorted. Look at that. So whenever we have changed between having our array right here 
called and this is this is a huge array i mean think about this a hundred million items here that is a astronomically large amount of uh, data to process and it did yeah as you could saw it, it as you saw it took four full seconds and we could have done some things to make this even faster to like cache the values or you know something like that but uh, you know we can ignore that for right now but the most important thing is right here in our new max method the most critical thing is we only had to iterate through that whole collection one time and right here in our sorted version we had to iterate over this who knows how many millions of times because not only were, was this method looking for the last value, but it sorted it, which meant that it went through an exponentially larger number of times in order to get that value. So I personally think that this is a very poor implementation to recreate Max, and Max, I can tell you, is not anywhere near as slow as this and just to kind of see what this looks like and i actually haven't done this i just thought about doing this right now let's do this let's see how fast max is on this so we're going to say max and we'll just do array max now let's see what this looks like And this will take a little while because it's going to process all three of these. I guess I technically could have skipped over sorted since we can ar we've already seen that that's a very poor implementation. But let's just let it run and get all three of them. So our first one of each should take around the same. It does, so 4.2 seconds. Sorted should take about 8 to 9 seconds, just like it did and max let's see where we're at here and look at that our version of our new max actually outperformed the max with ruby so if you built that congratulations it looks like we actually implemented a pretty fast way of finding the max value even of an astronomically large amount of data so great work on that side now let's finish the implementation and get our tests passing I'm going to clear out benchmark and I'm going to clear out all of our benchmark items and we can actually even get rid of this since we already implemented it and now we've uncommented now let's run this code let's run the test so I'm going to run rspec December 24th run this and there we go one example zero failure so great job if you went through this this was a longer exercise i usually like to keep these a little bit shorter however performance is so important and i this it kind of bothered me when i was researching this and i was trying to see if anyone else had come up with a better implementation than the each one that i had done and i saw so many people using the sorted one and it it did kind of bother me because if you were a new student and you didn't even think to use something like benchmark or some way of being able to test the performance of the code, you might have went and implemented the sorted method because that was one that so many people seem to think is the easiest way because you could do it in one line of code where you know ours did take you know, six or seven lines of code, but still that doesn't matter. I'd much rather use six or seven lines of code to make my program twice as fast than using one line of code. I think that's kind of a lazy approach. So it's also another thing that I thought was really important is this gets into the concept of algorithm analysis and if say you're a self-taught programmer you may not have really gotten into algorithm analysis before because it's something usually that you learn more during you know, a computer science or a, a kind of a university type of education but it is very important it, you know, it may sound boring it may sound theoretical but algorithm analysis is all about the concept of understanding how to make your programs faster and that's exactly what we did right here we looked at the two different systems and we compared them and yes we timed them but we also talked about how they worked we talked about how you can find in just one swoop 
the largest item by using our new max kind of approach versus all the different processes you have to put in place such as sorting a full set of items and how many more times you'd have to go through the list in order to find the value and so essentially what we did was cover a way of approaching algorithm analysis so great job through all of that i hope you enjoyed it and for anyone watching this while it's being filmed i hope everyone has a great christmas and a great christmas eve and i'll see you later